This one? This one? So, mine is a little bit different, but yesterday's lecture is almost identical with me, which I have given yesterday. So, nothing is neither identical nor equal in the living world, except the aliens so far, I know, in the universe. And if we think of any bifurcation, it is always complicated and not equal. Because you can see this picture, it's a, it's a beef arc from the beef arc, and you see so much complicated, actually, the physics and mathematics is here. And so if a coronary bifurcation, lesion is there, diversity is immense, and you need to be a mathematician and physician, and, and physicist, physicist also, to understand and to do the bifurcation. About 20% lesion we have to face with bifurcation in real world. And 4 to 10% should be the left main bifurcation. And it is very much di with huge diversity for each and every bifurcation lesion. That's why the not all bifurcation lesions are equal, that is true. And it is confusing also. Sometimes it's very hard to predict. It's very difficult to plan sometimes. These are the real world left main bifurcation cases. And these are the real world non-left main bifurcation cases so far we faced a little bit examples I have given. And everybody here knows the categorical difference, definitions, criteria, and types of bifurcation lesions. I'm just touching a little bit because from, from that classification, you can also tell that, yeah, all bifurcations are not equal. This is in terms of the anatomical consideration of the bifurcation lesions by Medina classification or left main versus non left main bifurcation, complexity of the bifurcation lesions as described so far by the definition criteria, and choosing the strategy whether to be provisional or upfront to stand strategy and also the operator's expertise and bias towards the dedicated two-stand strategy. These are all the things where the bifurcation lesions and its treatment becomes not equal. If we consider the anatomy of the bifurcation lesions, you know, this most important one is the, among the three caspers, uh, that the third one, the side branch, is the main determinant for bifurcation to define. And its relevance is very much important, how to treat and how to go for a bifurcation lesions. By a beef arc defines the side branch in a beautiful way that more than two millimeter, you consider you can consider it a clinical, clinically relevant, but also you have SNUH score. By this way, you can go for the bifurcation lesions side branch relevance. And for left main, of course, the side branch is always relevant. Now comes to the true and the non-true nomenclature, because which one is true? I'm thanking this Spanish guy, Alfonso Medina, for that one, make it simplified. And there are seven types of distribution here, and among these three are the true bifurcation lesions, except the third one, 101, which is not the truest true, because you see main and DK crash didn't include this part, this type, within the true bifurcation lesions, yeah. And then rest four is the non-true bifurcation lesions. And all bifurcation lesions are not equal from PCI strategy perspective also, because not all even true bifurcation lesions are not complex. And to smell that complexity, you have the, so far, the definition criteria, and which already as Ramesh has told a little bit here, yeah, that there are some major criteria and six minor criteria. And if you have one major and two minor, and you can define it as a complex one. And few very important basics also you have to remember to define and to feel that each bifurcation is not equal, like considering the Fenner's formula, considering the angulation also, because it, it, it causes shifting of the techniques, that which techniques you will apply, and which bifurcation is actually not of the same identical bifurcation lesions which you have faced before. And PCI strategies also, that's why it's changing. Consensus is there, 16th EBC paper is there, 
And in a nutshell, two strategies you have the stepwise layered provisional strategy and also a systematic upfront two stand strategy here, like TIT or TAP, CRUSH, or the CULOT techniques. This provisional philosophy, everybody likes it and everybody thinks of it. This is the best one. They, like, this is the way step that you will stand the MB, then pot, and it is done. Or you can go for a KBI and then it is done. Or you can go for a bailout two stand strategy. Now, from case-based approach, let's see some cases where the diversity is there in the left main lesions. Like for this non-true bifurcation lesion, the provision and philosophy was applied. This is a triple one bifurcation lesions here. You can see this is a triple one and make it simple by, by, by provisional philosophy. Look at the severity of the calcium here. And that's why we have to, if, if you see the IVAS also, that so much calcification was there, <clears throat> so you have to go for a shock therapy before going for the proper vessel bed preparation in the left main and also in the LAD. And after that, we have gone for stenting, the provisional philosophy for main branch stenting and left main to proximal LAD followed by a pot. Final KBI or not to kiss? That's a big question here because questions remains there, whether you will go for A, in a provisional philosophy, you would go for a final KBI or not, means you can prevent the fenestrated restenosis, that's true, you can ensure much more optimal SB flow, but Nordic 3 and COVID-3 is telling no difference, or even if KBI is not necessary at all, and that's why, and, but EVC main has mandated it that you have to go for a KBI and which has ended up with a 20% bailout standings. So that's the question here. And this is another case. This is the final picture for that case. You see the quite satisfactory ending here. But is provisional philosophy better for bifurcation PCI for all types of bifurcation? No, not quite true. Though these 12 are 12 uh, meta-analysis of the 12 studies, 10 observational and 2 RCTs, they are telling TLR is less in provisional philosophy. But what about this one? Which strategy to choose here? Like this 85 years old male, and you see the angiogram here, it's a, it's a catastrophic, it's a, it's, a, it's a disaster there, and it's a true left main bifurcation, and also it is actually just maintaining the definition criteria thinking of the side branch later is not possible for this case and I can't lose the huge side branch with complex angulation in this elderly comorbid case. So choose, choose the upfront two stand strategy by DK crush other than provisional here. And the complex journey by transradial approach which is also for elderly patient is necessary. And then we did the IVUS and after that, uh, we have gone for the all steps of decay crash, like pot, KBI, and the final pot in the long run. And then you see that final pullback, IVAS pullback from LAD and also from LCX, and the final smile without any hiccup there. So he went back home with walking. So question here is why decay crash for this case? Why not a tap or a culotte for this case? Difficult angulation, long lesion, operator's choice or expert is there. The heart talk was there, which uh, Sandra also touched here, like EBC main and decay crash five. And there, actually, though those both are a true, they have dealt with the true bifurcation lesions, but the complexity was the question there. Decay crash has more complex lesion, more syntax, higher syntax score, and, but in, interestingly, ABC main has used much more, 53% the culot, but in decay crush, everything 100% was the decay crush techniques. And that's the reality here. And also you can see that upfront to stand strategy by decay crush, these 13 are sitting in a beautiful paper in the sky, and there, these 13 RCTs has shown that the two stand strategy is better rather than the provisional, especially in special subset of the patient, and decay crush has the highest P score. And that's why that is good for this case. Now, if this case comes, I have cooked this case. This is a 75 years old male and a severe left main bifurcation lesions here. And you see that it is absolutely fulfilling the definition criteria, considering the difficult most angling, considering the comorbidity of the patients here, because that is also one factor. And uh, also 
we have to go for a transradial approach, we have chose decay nano crush techniques here, rather than the, the decay crush, the proper decay crush here. And then all the steps of decay nano crush by Reyes uh, at all, and did the, uh, every steps there and the IVAS also, then we have gone for the step-by-step -step nano crush techniques. And here only thing is different is that no, you don't need two rewiring. That makes it a little bit simpler. And then the final part we have done and final I was taken and the final picture with I was is really satisfactory for this case. What about most controversial, controversial 001 lesion in bifurcation? So what you will do there, non-diabetic, this case, the severe osteoproximal LCX disease only in 40 years patients. And in this case, 001 lesion, what you will do, apparently it's a 001, but osteoarthritis is a deep pain for an interventionist. And that's why what you will do, you have a huge diameter discrepancy sometimes in the LCX and the left main, and that's why for this case, we have gone for a inverted provisional techniques by doing the IVUS. And after doing the IVUS, you have some parity between the left main and the LCX diameter. So we have been able to go for a direct inverted provisional techniques from left main to LCX stenting, and did subsequently, I didn't go for a KBI. You didn't need it because I did the FFR. FFR in LRD is normal. So we didn't go, need to go for an opening of the, of the stent there, or side branch opening is not necessary. The final pick is good. The hard talk is, if this L6 is a smaller caliber, it's a bifurcation, listen, it's not equal all the time. And with acute angle with LED, where still positioning of the stand is not feasible, what you will do there in that sort of bifurcation lesion? That's a big question. Some answers are there, some techniques are there, like uh, you can go for an interventional or a non-interventional by medical management, but if the patient is symptomatic, you have to go for it. And you have POBA, you have options for modifiable balloons, you have options for drug eluting balloons. That is also possible here and some other small special techniques here. And drug eluting balloon in bifurcation lesions, now it's evolving also. It has some, some difficulties, some hassles there, but yet it is possible because leave nothing behind philosophy or leave less and to overcome the odds of the POVA in the side branch. That is possible by the DCB. So this is maybe, this will be maybe the future direction for the better provisional philosophy. And currently two DCB stages there, like DCB in the side branch and DES in the main branch, or DCB in the both side branch and main branch. That is also possible. Or you can go for a port, side DCB and port. You can finish the procedure by this sort of bifurcation lesions. Like uh, this one, the triple one lesions in left main bifurcation, but this is not the 001, it's a triple one left main bifurcation, but you can see the role of DCB here. It's a 40 years old male only, and he has a left main to LED before. Now she has come with a ISR, and it has become a true bifurcation lesions, just involving the distal left main and also the osteal LCX also. And here, whether you want to put another metal in the LCX? No, we didn't need to because we have now the DCB here. And what we have done, we have gone for the wearing and then it was difficult also. Then we have gone for the ballooning and then we have taken the DCB here. And in the LCX, left main to LCX. And then the kissing balloon inflation and the final part. And we have finished it and I was to left main to LED and left main to LCX was beautiful there. So I think it will, the patient will remain asymptomatic for a longer time, possibly. Then let's see the final trials are there. So to wrap up, I can tell all bifurcation lesions are not equal. Close, choosing a strategy where the provisional or systematic two strategy need meticulous observation. Better to have the diversity of the expertise in all two stand techniques. And the obvious purpose is to make the neocarina perfect. And basic principles of bifurcations are actually not that much different. Thank you very much. Thank you for patience hearing.